All right, practicum students, let's have a look at a second context uh, that we might establish for a different uh, reading source. So we have here, um, and again, these principles can be applied for listening as well. And I'll, I'll give you some reminders at the end of this video about how you might do that for listening as well. So uh, this is a reading about food around the world. So they're going to read kind of interesting, really, about how uh, where you live determines your diet and this kind of thing. And there's a bit of history in the beginning. Uh, for 1% of human history, we, we've known how to farm, so we haven't been doing that forever. Uh, so it's this one's got a bit of content in it, as well as language, so they could be learning something for the first time in English, in other words. Uh, and because it is um, rather dry, it's kind of like informational, uh, whereas the if you watch the first video about establishing context, that context was, it's kind of fun, it's not really learning anything about the world, it's just, you know, practicing reading English. And so, for that context of the dating website, you know, getting students involved in that context and making predictions about uh, that picture of the, of the woman, that kind of thing could be more appropriate for that. Well, in this context, uh, let me take it from the from the top, as we say. Uh, first, you want to activate schema. So again, what I might do here is I might show, uh, you know, a picture of, of, of food in general, like uh, a picture of different kinds of food. What do you see in the picture? And we're generalizing about food. We are personalizing about food. We're talking about food maybe even what's your favorite food, you know, and, and you do that using your interactions. You guys are already experts at this. And that's, you know, that's activating schema. Again, collecting their answers, perhaps up on the whiteboard uh, in, or in your slides, letting them know that, you know, uh, their English matters, what they're saying about themselves is important, etc. cetera. Uh, so now establishing context, well, we know they're going to read about different foods in different regions in the world. Uh, and so now I might actually take the pictures from this, uh, from this textbook and, and show just the pictures. So, you know, uh, you've got a young European girl here and then there's, you know, Southeast Asian uh, rice patty and uh, Middle Eastern, etc. You, you can show several of these pictures alone and why not uh, just make a prediction question about that. So uh, ask your partners, these are our pictures, what do you think we're going to read about? We know it's about food, but what do you think this reading is about? Okay, and I wouldn't even show the title at this point. I'm just showing the pictures. And I could do that by, by taking a screenshot from this PDF or uh, you guys are good with technology. You can do anything. Uh, you can just block out the text if you need to. All right. And again, using interactions, your students are asking each other, okay, what do we think this reading is going to be about? How can we connect these things? Uh, what do we think this, this text is going to tell us? And you know, someone might be close. Like one of the students might say, oh, we think it, it's gonna be about the history of food or, or traveling and eating or something like this. Um, and, you know, you get closer and closer to the actual topic. And then what you can do is you kind of reveal just the title. Ask your partners, are, were you right? Were you right when you, when you guess what it would be about? Okay, and so that leads leads to some really, it's a really smooth transition from the general activating schema to the more specific establishing context about this particular text. Um, 
And at that point, you can do your top down, bottom up questions, um, a main idea question, which you're getting very good at, as well as detail questions. Uh, so um, I hope that makes it more clear. And again, the, the uh, principles of activating schema and establishing context, they are exactly the same when we're talking about teaching listening. Uh, one thing that I would say that students often forget is, uh, let's imagine this one is a listening. This would be kind of a dense listening, but let's imagine this is a listening for your students, uh, and all you have is the script, and you have the, the audio file, you know, maybe something written in your textbook about it. Well, in that case, it would be up to you how you want to scaffold that, right? Um, and you can still show images even if your textbook is not giving you images. So what that means is you need to go into uh, neighbor images or Google images and search for an appropriate image that would get them thinking about the right ideas, get them thinking about the right uh, general or specific topic. Uh, so. You could do a very similar thing if you just had the listening text here. Similarly, uh, in the first video, we had a, uh, a, a dating profile, and I suggested showing a picture and creating a situation uh, where, you know, your cousin is single and, and uh, who thinks she's gonna be a good match, and you give some information about the cousin so they can make a, make a decision, like he doesn't like animals or whatever. <laughs> And uh, you could do the same thing if you're doing a listening. Uh, so feel free to scaffold your listening as well. And uh, that was another way that you could establish context for a reading or a listening text. I hope things are a bit uh, clearer for you guys now. As always, uh, like, subscribe, uh, email, comment. Let me know what videos you'd like me to make. All right, practicum students. All the best.